Hello everybody, Steve here. Today we're going to be building a greenhouse. It's going to be more of a Quonsie hut type of thing. Real simple in design. I just got back from my favorite hardware store and until they pay me to endorse me, we'll just guess on who it could be. However, let me show you the job site we're working with. Here we are. What I like to do first is take the basic stuff that we're going to need, lay it all out, almost like you would uh, if you're assembling a desk or home theater uh, system center type thing. Make sure we've got all of our pieces and our parts. Uh, this is all one inch. I like to use in a greenhouse electrical conduit uh, versus regular PVC pipe because it's more durable and it doesn't get brittle over time. Uh, so these are all, these pipes here are one inch. They're ten foot long sections. You're going to need six all together but right now we have four two by four by tens laid out you can build this how big or small as you want uh, this one I'm building is a 20 foot long so that's two 10 foot sections you can see here what we do is we go by and go every 24 inches or two feet and make us a line that's where we're going to center our guy and he's going to get screwed down under that board eventually you do that all the way down on both sides and in here obviously this being the end piece we have a T so you'll need two T's for the operation and the rest will be four-way crosses there you'll notice the two poles in the middle here that is going to go inside our uh, other one inch conduit that's going to go uh, down the middle as well but you put that inside for more support that way your your roof won't collapse on you later but that's where we're at with it for now and I will be taking more videos since I'm by myself and piecing it all together for you as we go along thanks for watching hey again so let me give you a little briefing of where we're at what we've done here is put two screws all the way down we've attached that it's all the way over there two screws at the end the three inch screws I've got all these attached and now what I'm doing that's a before and that's an after put two screws in there that way it just ensures that they're going to stay put we've run our center pieces down and last but not least remember this metal pipe this guy right here, these went in there, and I don't know if you can see it, but he's nestled in there, and that'll give our roof a lot of support. So here in a second, we're going to go and put it up. Well, good morning, Steve here again. It's uh, day two of our project. Yesterday, my father came out to help me. You're going to need some help when it comes to setting up the actual frame of this thing because there is a lot of spring tension in those guys let me tell you that thing will launch you if you're not careful but basically a little bit of a painstaking process but that's where we're at with it now I've got my door framed in there and that's where one of our IBC totes is going to be I'm opting not to go with a window in the back I'm just going to frame all that in and basically all that is is just some two by fours and you just want to tow screw them in at the bottom and then come over here and just screw through the pipe that way it gets them in place you can put whatever size door whatever kind of door you want I'm making mine 40 inches wide so that uh, whenever we get another tote it'll fit in there and now I'm getting ready to plastic the thing and what you want to do is there's uh, several different ways that you can do it but what I prefer to do is the shingle method so I've got my first strip and then that's going to go on the bottom row first and then I will layer it and then eventually a cap on the top uh, we'll finish it off and then the sides of course will be done last so that's where we're at with it and uh, basically this is a hundred foot roll 
by 10 feet wide. Get them anywhere. You just want to roll it past where you're going so that you can adequately attach to the other side. I prefer to wrap it around the uh, corner posts, if you will, kind of wrap it on the inside and then staple it. And it's what you're going to do is use a staple gun. Just staple as you go. And of course, just making sure that you get it on as tight as possible. Now, some people, I, I probably will do this as well, will leave about maybe a foot, foot or so of plastic on the ground. And then that basically keeps drafts from coming in. And also, when you cover it with dirt or rock or however you're going to landscape, it also uh, makes a nice anchor. So this thing is pretty sturdy as it is. It's very heavy. Don't let it fool you. Uh, but then that will really definitely ensure that the wind isn't going to carry it away for you. So that's where we're at with it now, and I'll check back with you a little later. Bye. Hey, everybody. Steve back at you. It's been a little bit. Uh, apologize, but we've had some really bad weather. Uh, before I do the big reveal, just so you know, this type of greenhouse literally is a two-day project. It does not take long at all. Uh, let's see the finished result. There you go. As you can see, there's snow on the ground. We had a bad snow and ice storm, and the thing held up remarkably well. Strong wind. We'll end here. Now you can shore up this end however you want to. I'm not really interested in cosmetic look. Uh, but basically what you do is in the last video, or the last segment rather, we had our plastic laying out. And then that, they're 10 feet wide and these are 10 foot long pipe. So basically the first layer started at the ground and then comes up to right here. And as you can see, it's been top, and it goes around, and down the other side, and you do that on both sides, and then I got my little ridge cap. And so just one more strip at the top, and that comes down, and it covers it, and then where you have your seams here, just put some, uh, just some duct tape, and that holds really good. You can. I did hear a little bit just to try and control it. I put some silicone underneath here just to so it wasn't flapping so bad. But you do want to try and keep some ends of it open and breathable so that when you do get, especially if you live in an area with strong wind, that uh, the air has somewhere to go. But as you can see here, we haven't covered it yet, but we have our layer of plastic down and actually the snow and ice just kind of ran off and covered it for me but that also helped keep it down here's the other side and here's a good shot of the uh, that panel that's your it's coming off the roof or at the top rather in the duct tape and then the sides just do the same with the sides and then here's the door nothing spectacular just two by four construction. Make sure you get your angles cut. Wrapped it in plastic. Little hook here to hold it. And then at the top here, I got a spring so that it will shut. Remove some stuff in here. Now outside today, it is 25 degrees Fahrenheit. This is just a look at the inside. And let's go down here. Here's my little aquaponic setup. Going just fine. And what does it say it is in here? I don't know if you can see that, but that says it's 49 degrees. So, let's just round up and say it's 50 degrees in here. And uh, 25 degrees outside. So they, these things are awesome. Real simple. There's your framework. Now back to tension, and I'm, I made this mistake. But I'll show my mistakes. I'm not afraid. This guy. 
there is such tension right in here that I inadvertently, I don't know what happened, but I, I decided I'm going to put a staple in here and staple some of this plastic down. And as soon as the staple pierced this thing, the pressure, it just snapped it. So, um, you don't do that again. <laughs> I, there really is a lot of force in, in this construction. And it really held up nicely. So, that's my little greenhouse two-day project. I'll be uh, putting the plans together if you want to uh, check back later on that. Thanks.